Hello, welcome to an introduction to actuators presented to you by the Support Center for Microsystems Education. In this presentation, you will learn about actuators, what they are, what they can do, and their various applications. Be sure to read the introduction to actuators lesson. This lesson goes into more detail on some of the devices discussed in this presentation. In this presentation, we will answer the question, what are actuators? We will also discuss several types of actuators in both the macro and micro scales. The understanding of this information is important to microelectromechanical, MEMS or microsystems technology. An actuator is a device that actuates or moves something. An actuator uses some type of energy to provide motion or to apply a force. For example, an electric motor uses electrical energy to create a rotational movement to turn or move an object. A gear train uses a mechanical or electrical input to move something in rotary or linear motion. A screw jack uses manual or mechanical input to create linear motion. In short, an actuator converts some type of energy into motion. Actuators consist of motors, gears, pumps, pistons, valves, and switches. The energy used on the input of an actuator determines its classification. For example, manual actuators require a manual or mechanical input, such as levers and jacks. Hydraulic or pneumatic actuators use pressurized liquid or air to move something. Such devices include pistons and valves. Thermal actuators use hot and cold temperatures. A type of thermal actuator that we will discuss is the bimetallic switch. Electric actuators use electricity as the input energy. Such actuators include mortars and resonators. Let's start with the discussion of thermal actuators. Thermal actuators are actuators that convert thermal energy into movement. One type of thermal actuator is a bimetallic strip. A strip made from two different metals such as steel and copper. The two metals have different temperature coefficients which means when heated they expand at two different rates as shown in this image. When these two metals are heated, metal 2 expands more than metal 1. Therefore, metal 2 has a higher temperature coefficient than metal 1. Now, let's join these two strips together. Since they are joined and each metal is expanding, but expanding at different rates, the strip bends. In this case, in which direction does the strip bend? If you say it upward, you are correct. This bending is due to thermal expansion. Thermal expansion is the manifestation of a change in thermal energy in a material. When a material is heated, the average distance between atoms or molecules increases. The amount of distance differs for different types of material. This microscopic increase in distance is not perceivable to the human eye. However, because of the huge numbers of atoms in a piece of material, the material expands considerably and at times is noticeable to the human eye. The opposite reaction occurs with a decrease in temperature when most materials contract. When exposed to the elements, a material constantly expands and contracts with ambient temperature changes. This is why expansion joints are built into roadways and bridges. The thermal switches in the scanning electron microscope image on the right are micro-sized vertical thermal actuators and they operate by a differential expansion between two layers of dissimilar materials in each arm of the switch. To obtain this initial upward curvature seen in the picture, the engineers took advantage of residual stresses in the film layers used to build the switch. At the micro scale, bimetallic actuators are made using both metallic and non-metallic materials. A variety of thin films with different thermal expansion characteristics are used to fabricate switches, electrodes, valves, 
strain gauges, and diaphragms. Electric actuators use electricity or electrical energy to create motion. An electric motor is a type of an electric actuator. Most direct current motors operate by current flowing through a coil of wire and creating a magnetic field around the coil. The coil is wrapped around the motor's shaft and is positioned between the poles of a large permanent magnet or electromagnet. The interaction of the two magnetic fields causes the coil to rotate on its axis, rotating the motor's shaft. Reverse the direction of the current flowing through the rotor and the rotor will rotate in the opposite direction. Thus, an electric motor is a transducer and an actuator because it converts electrical energy to magnetic energy then to mechanical energy or motion. Mechanical actuators convert a mechanical or manual input into linear or rotary motion. A common example of a mechanical actuator is a screw jack. Rotation of the screw causes the legs of the jack to move apart or move together. Inspecting the motion of the top point of the jack, this mechanical rotational input is converted into linear mechanical motion. Mechanical actuators can produce a rotational output with the proper gearing mechanism. An example of a microactuator is the electrostatic comb drive. Comb drives are used in many MAMS applications such as resonators, microengines, and gyroscopes. The force generated is low, usually less than 50 micronewtons. However, these devices are predictable and reliable, making them usable for a variety of micro applications. This image is an example of a MAMS electrostatic comb drive resonator, which is a common MAMS actuator. A resonator is a device which naturally oscillates at its resonance frequency. The oscillations in a resonator can either be electrostatic or mechanical. As an actuator, this comb drive resonator can move another object at the rate of the comb drive's oscillations. In the introduction to actuators lesson, you will study a MAMS device that uses comb drives to move an optical mirror. Here are some questions for you. When was the last time that you actuated something? What did you do? What was the actuator and what was moved? In summary, an actuator is a device that converts energy into motion. Actuators can be thermal, electric, manual, or hydraulic. Actuators are also found in both the macro and micro scales. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to visit the SCME Support Center website for access to educational materials for many microsystems topics.